We're at the bottom left side of Nimbus LE. We have Kai Fire. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. Whoops. Misclick, misclick. We're okay, we're okay. We're gonna be fine. Um, he's gonna be facing off against his opponent, leading the series 1 0. It is Roots Fenner. And again, we talked a little bit about the playstyle, just a quick onslaught, good timing of overload of units, and um, due to that gold hatch being right there, it allowed for reinforcements, I think, to come even a lot sooner than Kaifar expected as well. So, that is, again, a risk and reward type of scenario, and he got the most out of that reward, definitely, for sure. Uh, we'll see, though, what will happen on this game. Again, every, anybody that watched WCS America yesterday absolutely probably hates this map to death now due to Avila and Patton just <laughs> putting a three-hour game on it. There we go. Update the scores. But, yeah, no. Y yesterday, yesterday, that was a rough day. I'm, I'm, I'll admit, yesterday was a rough day. Definitely a rough patch for StarCraft and a rough patch for North American StarCraft guys. <laughs> Typically, you want to like you know you you, you want to cheer on the players that qualified and you want them to be like the highlight of what was going on. You're like, yeah, congrats, Balloon Guitar Cheese, you guys did so well. Account, um, who was it? Who was it? Uh, like, um, No Regret or whatever, or Infinite. Like all those guys that are like doing so great, and then you have that happen like it's gonna take all suck all the attention away from uh, the actual winner it's like uh, all everybody's gonna talk about it's a three hour long game between Avila and Patton <sighs> that was a game that was starting out for way too long now for, the, for those that were not around I will drop a little bit of insight um, in terms of what happened yesterday we're at, the, at that point, I, like about an hour or so into the game, like I've casted already a few of the games. Now I'm sitting around, like looking to cast a few more games. There's really not a lot left because mo most of them were close to the quarterfinals. So, you know, somebody like Caldor on the mainstream or base trade were grabbing like a couple of the more main games. So, I was sticking around looking for more games. I'm looking at the bracket. And I'm like, I see Jon Snow. I'm like, is he played or I'm like, I asked Farside. I'm like, if he's updated the bracket, no, yeah, like it actually is just he's just behind. Like the bracket's behind. I'm like, what the hell's going on? I look, who the hell's who the hell is playing? The Liquipedia bracket only shows the round of 32 and on ahead. So we had to go back to the ESL bracket, and of course it's it's a Vila, damn it. He's playing against, he's playing against Imperial Fist, aka Patton, and um, we were like wondering what the hell is going on. So everybody tunes in this stream. We look and see it's already over an hour, like 30 minutes into the game. Of course, 10 minutes later, the game gets paused. Patton jumps into the WCS uh, channel chat and says, "Guys, we got, like what the hell is going on right now?" Like. If we're going to keep this going, is there like a ruling on a draw or something like that? Now, Farside, the funny thing is we're about an hour 50 into the game. Farside wanted to call a pot, like call a draw um, at about the two-hour mark if nothing really happened. But due to the players saying that uh, it was still very up in the air, it was very, in, in, like, in, like it, it wasn't definite that it was going to be a draw one way or another. Um... So Patton, of course, claimed he 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 thought he was going to win no matter what, which he was right. Uh, eventually, ended up being right. Sorry, Avilo. He's basically playing for a draw for the most part, but he was really adamant about trying to take the draw at the two-hour mark. But because players, we all were just all sitting there like, no, just let him play on at this point. We've already been going for about two hours. Just let him keep going. So we let him keep going. <laughs> we let him keep going, and basically that happened. That back and forth mess uh, that finally ended in Patton fungling down those ravens in the very corner. Very interesting, though. Very interesting how it ended up. Very interesting game. All right, so uh, Fenner grabbing his third hatch right now. Grabbing his initial gases, um, very similar to last game, nothing really too out of the ordinary. Once again, we do see that Stargate getting placed down. Now, remember with this map, you do have the in-base expansion, so as a Protoss player, if you do want to grab your third base, you do have to put yourself out there on the map. Now, the third location is not the worst location ever to be able to put yourself out on the map, because you look at it, and if we like kind of zoom out a little bit, you take a look at the general vicinity, Force fields can really chop up this block, uh, especially if uh, attack does come to it. And then if you're sitting right around here as well, this whole entire area could get chopped up by force fields. At least specifically this like thin little thing to army into this area. 
The one, the one problem is, uh, if in fact, you know, you do see the rocks getting broken down, it might cause a little bit of problems, and you'll have to bounce around a little bit more and keep track of this area, but for a Protoss player, this isn't really the worst scenario of a map until mutas start coming out, and I want to see eventually, with the lair coming up, will we see the mutas? Because one thing you're not going to be able to do efficiently on this map is to be able to defend three bases. You just poke through here, they're going to be able to fly out. Um, they come back through here, maybe poke at the third base if the army gets drawn inside. Uh, they somehow manage to poke through the main, they're going to be able to float th through the backside. It's not the most, uh, the most amount of airspace, but uh, it's something that you could really work with. Oracle flying in here, trying to get a little bit of damage done. Looks like it was able to get three kills, so pretty efficient uh, for staying alive and trying to work its way through spore crawlers. Really working the edge. Now, uh, if I take a look over here, where's that at? We have a second Stargate, but we have a Fleet Beacon coming up. And are we going to see carriers? Like, unless this is like an anticipatory to like two base... Or I mean, I'm sorry, not two base. Unless this is like anticipatory for mutas, I don't think he's going to go plus two phoenixes. This has to be for carriers, right? Yep, it is. It is for carriers, and he's getting the graviton catapult as well. This is awesome. Uh, it's time to watch the Golden Armada, man. Kai Fire, my man. Showman, no doubt. But... At the same time, he will need a third base, though. If he plans to produce uh, efficiently carriers and some ground units as well, uh, he should actually have enough minerals to be able to produce zealots, and he's adding those gates right now. But um, if he really wants to maybe even go up to three star gates, he's definitely going to have to grab another base right now as soon as he possibly can. This is just funny uh, because you really don't see this too often. So this is going to be pretty cool. It'll be interesting to see how this works out. Fenner, Fenner, meanwhile, grabbing his fourth hatch right now. Spires underway, 20 links in production, roach speed. And uh, as well, grabbing another gas, only up to five right now. Doesn't even have a sixth one just yet. We do have an overseer flying through here. Fenner's got to be just like, oh, dude, what the hell is going on? Does he spot the fleet beacon? He does, barely at the very edge of the fleet beacon. He spots it now. Now he's got to be wondering, okay, what is going on right now? Usually you don't put down a fleet beacon unless you're anticipating mutas. Or you see mutas already out on the map. What are you doing right now? Mothership core is transforming into the mothership. What am I watching right now? This is so awesome. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, you, you watch a note. Sorry, I've watched way too many PVZs in the past couple weeks and uh, casted too many PVZs to the point where I, I, I've seen the same standard damn builds over and over again today already between our TVZ and this one. This is a lot more fun to watch. Fenner has a great ground force right now of Lings and Roaches, but the problem is, um, what does he have in terms of being able to deal with not only carriers, but uh, carriers with, a, with the help of the Mothership uh, itself. So Mothership does form, there's our friendly familiar unit from back in the Wings of Liberty, it pops up. You do not see this every day, I'm sorry, you just don't. Um, now, the question for Kaifire I would have, are you going to continue this and go for a two base all in, or are you going to grab a third base eventually because you will probably have to grab a third base eventually. Fenner meanwhile dropping a fifth and sixth hatch at the very north ends of the bases. Uh, most likely those are going to be the gas bases uh, and for those that don't understand to be able to produce, you know, high efficient uh, Zerg units like Corruptors, Mutas, uh, Hydras, etc. and be able to get all those upgrades, you are going to need some additional gases. Maybe not to the point where you're going to need number uh, 11 and 12, but 10 gas, yeah, you know, it's not, not too bad to have. Not too bad to have 10 gases going. You know, because your mineral, re your resource income is never really an issue as a Zerg player. It usually comes down to gas, and the the, the thing with that as well is you're you're looking the, the best way to remax as well. Because you you know as a pro as a Zerg player you really don't want to let you leave your hands into just one single fight. You never know versus a Protoss player how the fight's going to go. You're going to need to be able to remax. You're going to be able to probably need to produce a second fight of some sort. Twenty four more uh, drones in production. Uh, Fenner up to ninety three right now. I'm going to be splitting those bad boys up to the north ends of the bases. Uh, of course, a few of those are going to be dipped most likely for gases, some for spines, some for spores, just to get some static defense on the north ends, uh, but mainly for the gases and the mining. Yeah, for, the, for, those, getting, for those getting smacked by Nybot, I can't control them, man. I can't control Nibot. 
I could, I could probably take off like the caps, whatever the cap span or whatever. I don't know. I, I've, I've like the na I've like the natural nightbot. All I did was just add some commands in terms of like the cast, like the chat commands. That's all I really did. Everything else is practically by default. It's not. It's not because I don't like you guys like cheering for players and whatnot. Stay. Third base over here, we have a little bit of a run by Lings trying to get a little bit of damage done. Zelts clear them out. Meanwhile, over here we got uh, the Armada of Mothership Corps wiping out this fourth base with relative ease. We'll recall back uh, home over to the third base. We have a lot of forces over here out in the middle of the map. Void Ray does get caught. Um, this is going to be very interesting to see how this works out because it's a lot of corruptors. Queens, they need to catch up as soon as they possibly can because that's the reason why they're walking across the map to be able to transfuse those corruptors. Mothership core, uh, I'm sorry, Mothership itself does go down. Carriers are pretty naked right now. Corruptors doing some pretty good damage to them. Um, one carrier, two carriers, sorry, two carriers, one carrier left. Void rays do clear out the rest of the forces and now these queens are off of creep. These are some big fat girls, man. They are they are off of creep and they are in the wrong place at the wrong time. Four out of the five get cleared out. They had a lot of energy on them too as well, which is really the sad part. If he was able to keep up, uh, keep pace up with the corruptors, he might have been able to actually uh, transfuse a lot of those corruptors and keep them alive at least long enough to maybe take out the last carrier. Really depends. Really depends. But here we go, the push does continue over here into this third base, into the natural area. We have more corruptors getting produced right now with 12, ro 12 roaches in production. Now the one thing about the corruptors, even if he is able to clear out all this air, and which he's looking like he's able to do, there is still a lot of ground forces around here which he's going to have to deal with. A lot of zealots, he's got uh, stalkers, sentries. Gateway army particularly, so it's not the strongest, it's not like there's some immortals within this as well in Templars, but um, with force fields and splitting up a lot of these units and a heavy focus on corruptors, the corruptors do become pretty paper paperweight-esque units. Now this is the one point in time where a really good decision making by Fenner where he wouldn't grab that 5th and 6th hatch because even though they do have to come across the whole entire map, that additional income with the resources and the gas and just larva in general, he's able to produce at a very heavy pace and now he's clearing out the rest of the forces, chasing Kai Fire back all the way home and uh, with the relative loss of carrier mothership um, and just general ground army and sentries I think this could be pretty close to over like even at this point like the corruptors are going to be able to go through the stock or fire through the void rays they clear out the carrier and now mothership core goes down as well before it even has a chance to get enough energy for photon overcharge um, at this point ground units links are starting to stream in he's trying to get as many reinforcements as he possibly can the roach and hydra numbers are a little bit too overwhelming for him to take tackle he does not have blink if i'm correct so a lot of these units right here are trapped on the low ground as you can see the stock because he's starting to build them within within the natural but uh he's going to lose his base and yeah it's it's over guys it is over fenner's going to be moving on to the round of 16 good play by him <laughs> those corruptors are just like sitting up in the air just like spitting just venom on on those stalkers <laughs> just like take that <laughs> Yeah, I mean, right right now it's it's five it's five base versus in concept one. Yeah, just one one base. Like all the all the mining is gone. I guess for in in that regards it would be a, yeah no it's actually five base because he's done such a good job of splitting up all his drones, sending it to the other bases. He's still pretty fresh on the minerals inside his main base, fresh enough. So yeah, it's one base versus five right now. Kai fire killing his own gate to break out uh, to allow actually those Archons and other units to be able to actually walk out. So uh, in terms of just meta gear, like theory crafting right now, Kai Fire would really need a lot of time. He'd need to be able to get a third and fourth base up. He'd need Templars desperately and finally he does have Templars. Storms could be a uh, game changer in terms of some of those light units like Lings and Hydras and even uh, pretty effective versus Roaches and Corruptors at times. but. Are they going to have enough time to uh, gather up Storm? No, so he just forms them in Archons. He's going to just try to battle this out right now uh, the, best that is po the best that he possibly can. Meanwhile, over here, we do have a little bit of a Ling versus Zealot battle going on. They will be cleared out as well. Archons are falling. The final uh, few Archons do fall, and you can see Kaifire doing the best that he possibly can. Micron back some of those injured ones that lost their shield. 
I don't, I don't, I don't, I just don't see Kai Fire coming back in this. I'm sorry. Like, uh, if we have any Kai Fire fans, guys, I do apologize if I'm being a little bit too blunt, but. We're talking about the math of StarCraft, and. You, you know, just with Larva, with the, the positioning of uh, base count and just general unit composition, what's left out on the field, you know that Fenner has got a pretty significant advantage. We see the Archon, uh, Zelt, Stalker Force kind of press forward. I guess just double checking to see if there maybe was a hatch over here. But this is another one of those issues. Does he even have a Robo? Actually, that's the main question. He doesn't have a Robo, so without the Robo, he's a, he has the, the inability to produce observers. And uh, without the observers, you're watching this creep actually uh, just absolutely dominate and spread across the map. It's almost right under the third base and natural of his opponent. Uh, the Archon Force is out in the middle of the map. No Mothership Core around. Huge Force just completely going to swell over this. And um, we should be seeing that GG come out here momentarily, guys. It was a good effort by Kaifire. I like the idea behind it, but just not enough grit, not enough muscle to continue the push. Corruptors and uh, just decision making from Fenner able to break through the Air Army and uh, finally leave a very vulnerable Gate Army to fall down as well. So Fenner does move on to the round of 16. A, a step closer.